Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about Pinot or Pinot.js, and this is used specifically for logging in a JavaScript application. But first, let's talk about logging. Why do you need a dedicated tool to help you log? I mean, console log is already there. It already exists in JavaScript. So what is the benefit of Pinot? So at the moment, I have a simple Node Express app running with one root. This is the application. If you want to know more about how I created this, I'm going to have a link in the description of a video that goes through how this was created step by step. But as you can see here, it's really simple. It has one endpoint, which is slash test, and it will run a console log with some text that will say hello world. So that's what this is at the moment. Now in this code, I'm using the standard console log, which is just saying serving hello world. And if I go to the browser, refresh the page and then go to my terminal, you can see that it just says serving hello world. And this is okay, but ideally I'd want more information. I'd want some date time. I'd want to know if this is an error or if this is a warning. And even though the console log in JavaScript does give you the option to set this as an error, it doesn't actually do much. It still says serving hello world. There is no difference between this text and this text. They look pretty much identical although one has been set as just a log and one has been set as an error. So as you can see, there's more that can be done to make this logging much more useful. And that's where Pino comes in. So let's go ahead and install it. I'm going to run npm i Pino to install it. And it's really simple to instantiate. All I need to do is import Pino from Pino. And then I can have a constant called logger, which will run the Pino command. And that's it. I can go ahead and use it like so. Now let's get rid of this ESLint error by changing my tsconfig to allow module resolution. Let's test this application. And as you can see here, the log has much more information. It tells me what level it is. It tells me the time. It tells me what host it's on and it gives me the message. So this is great, but it's not very readable. Now, luckily, this is just a JSON object. So if you wanted to, you could write code to customize this yourself. But there is a plugin that will already make this easy for us to read called Pinot Pretty. So let's go ahead and install that. Now let's create a new file called logger.ts. And this is going to get the Pinot import from here. And we're going to have a console called logger which will run this Pino, same as we did in the previous file, but with a few options. First one being transports, which will transform the log code using Pino Pretty. And we'll leave it like this for now. Don't forget to export logger. And now we can import logger into here using the .js extension because we're using ES modules and we can get rid of this. So now that that's done, we can go back into our terminal, run the code, and now we see that the logs are much easier to read. We have the date time, we have the status, so the info, we have the machine that it's running on, and the message. But there are a few more things we can do to make it even more human readable. So let's go back to the code and change the Pinot options. Now let's add another key value pair to this object called options. And what this is going to do is change a few things for us. It's going to translate the time and it will also ignore this section over here, which is not really useful to me at this moment. So I'm going to get rid of it. To do that, we write ignore here and we're going to say we'll get rid of the PID host name, which is the section I was talking about. So now if I save this and you now see that it's no longer showing the information about my machine that it was before, and it has formatted the time. Now, before we continue, please make sure that in the code, when you execute this, you put a comma here and not a dot, which is the mistake I made before. And also make sure you spelt translate time correctly because I also made that mistake. Now, even though the date and time here is already readable, I think we can make it even more readable. I don't really want the year to come first because nobody reads the year first. And the time now on my system is actually 225, not 125, 
because by default, Pino is using the UTC time zone and I'm not in that time zone right now. So let's go ahead and change that. Inside the code, we can change this from a Boolean to a string and we can say we want the system time and not the UTC time. And we want the day first, then the month, then the year. And then we want the hours, the minutes and the seconds. Now let's go ahead and refresh the browser, check our terminal and see that it's displaying exactly how we've put it. We can also now in our code have some extra options. So we can have info, we can have error, we can have warning and the colors will display it accordingly in our terminal. Now, if you want the error to pop out a bit more, you could always use fatal and that will look something like this. So that is a quick overview of Pino. You can see how easy that was to set up and to customize. I hope you found this video useful. I hope this has encouraged you to go ahead and check out Pino. And if it has, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel to see more videos about web and game development. Thanks for watching.